Okay. Choice one, first of September, second, 45 minute lesson. Action. Okay, right, going. Chocolate or Biltong. That looks like Biltong that could actually pull my teeth out. And we had a half a hand, yes, Louisa. Okay, all right, listen carefully. Okay, so if you have to write a scientific name, remember that there are two. And you will get asked this. You will get asked this. So especially in a case study thing, they get blah, 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 they'll give you a few scientific names, and then they say to you, what is the genus name? Okay, everybody stop fiddling. What you need to put in your mouth, put in your mouth now. And that's it. Okay. Now stop fiddling. Okay. All right. So remember that a scientific name you learnt in grade eight is a two word name. This is the genus name and this is the species name. When it is typed, it is always in italics. When you write it or write any part of it, you are to underline it. <laughs> Would you like a piece of paper towel? I will, I will repeat that. Now that we've all got to focus off of Joshua's food. Okay, right, we're all sitting still, we nobody's fiddling, we're all focused. And we're listening. Okay. So remember that the scientific name is two words. Occasionally, you will get a three word scientific name. Remind me to go back to that and I'll explain that to you. This is the genus name. This is the species name. The genus name is always written with a capital letter to start it. And the species name is all lowercase. Okay. If I say to you, give me the species name of the lesser bush baby, you give me this word only. And if you write the whole thing, you get naught. If you put the genus and the species name, you get naught. If you write it with a capital letter, you get naught. If you don't underline it, you get naught. So a scientific name when it is typed is always typed in italics. When it is written, it is always underlined. Now life is too short to pick up a ruler. Just hand underline it. Okay. We will not ask you to learn scientific names except in the section on evolution where we do expect you to know about six, more or less, scientific names. So they will always ask you, 
they'll give you a splurb and then they'll say to you, what is the genus name of a lesser bush baby? And you write Gallego and it's got a capital G and you hand underline it. And if you write Gallego Senegalensis, you get naught. If you don't underline, you get naught. If you don't write it with a capital letter, you get naught. So just learn the rules. Okay, are you happy with that? Very occasionally, you will get a scientific name that has three words. And that third word is a subspecies. So humans, for example, modern day humans are Homo sapiens sapiens. So there were archaic humans, which were Homo sapiens, and we're a subspecies of Homo sapiens. We are Homo sapiens sapiens, because we've got a third word to our name. So that is just a subspecies. Again, lowercase, the whole thing for subspecies, and underlined. If it is typed, it's in italics. Now, will we ask that one, like, what is the, like, the subspecies of the... Yeah, for the evolution one, because there you've got to know it. So it's part of the stuff that is in the SAGs that you have to know it. Here, what you will see if you go through the SAGs for this section, is they say, and one South African example, and one South African example. If I need you to know the thing, I will tell you I need to know. So the general rule, and you didn't come to a single lesson last term, and you never came online to a single lesson last term, so I'm sure you don't know this. Anything that's in blue, you don't learn. I know that one, because I was one. Anything that's in blue, you don't learn. Though that doesn't mean because the background's in blue, you don't learn it. <laughs> or the headings in blue, you don't learn it. Okay, learn it. I'm listening. Um, if you were to ask what the species name, would you write it in lowercase? Yes. 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 You'll lose a mark if you put an uppercase. Because we, we're not only looking, do you, do you know what the species name is from the text? We're looking, do you know the rules that apply to writing a genus name or a species name or the whole thing? And if we ask you for the scientific name, it's the whole thing. Okay. All right, so an individual is a single organism of a specific species, so this is an individual, lesser bush baby, which is an indigenous South African animal. Everybody, show me how big a bush baby is. Yeah, let me, you kids are clueless wonders. Okay, so it's about this big. That's what I said. Josh is great. Okay, never mind. Okay. So remember, these definitions are critically, critically important. You must learn them. So a population, and this is terribly important because the section is population ecology. So a population is a group of individuals of the same species living together in a defined area such that they can undergo random interbreeding and are reproductively isolated from other individuals of the same species in other habitats. So that's one hell of a long thing. Okay, so this picture shows a population of the national fish of South Africa, which is a cholion. Okay, I'm not even going to try and say that scientific name. Okay, all right, so what does this mean? It means if you go to, what kind of fish do they have in Dahlstrom? Is it trout? Yeah. Okay. So you go to Dolstrom, and here's a dam, and they trout in that dam. And also in Dolstrom, down the road, is another dam, also with trout. This is a trout population, and this is a different trout population, because you cannot get Alfie from this trout population and Angelina from this trout population doing the humpy pumpy. <laughs> because they're in dams. And they can't walk across land. Okay. So. Humans. So here we've got 
Alfie in Joburg and Angelina Human in Cape Town. Same population or different populations? Same. Because Alfie can get on an aeroplane, albeit with difficulty at 8,000 Rand at the cost at the moment, and he can go down to Cape Town and he can do the humpy pumpy with Angelina down there. Okay. So they're not reproductively isolated. You have to look at the particular example that they've given you and think about it carefully. So if you've got two game reserves up near Kruger Park and they're both fenced with electric fences, and in this particular game reserve you've got Impala, and in that game reserve you've got Impala, and they can stand at the fence with their noses together, unless they can do the dirty, they're different populations. Do you understand that? If they reproductively isolated from each other, for whatever reason, distance, offense, whatever, they are different populations. But within this game reserve, these impala can do the dirty, and in this game reserve, these impala can do the dirty, then, please don't say that in a test or exam, it's not a scientific <laughs> term. Then this is one population of impala, and this is a different population of impala. Do you understand that? Birds, very difficult to define a population because it's very easy for them to get from one place to another place and reproduce. Okay, so you would have to, if they say to you, blah, 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 story, 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 is this a population of elephant or not? Justify your answer. You need to say yes or no, you need to give the definition, and you need to say how the information that you've got there applies to that definition, or how that definition applies to that information. And that's why definitions are so important in this section. Okay, right, you're happy. Yes, Josh. Nice properly. Human, speak. You have to know like that whole definition. No. So you learn the first line, Mwiza can learn the second line, and then you learn the third line, and then fortunately in the exam they let you work together. Yes, the whole definition. What wasn't clear about that? Surely that was clear. Sorry. I'm listening. Just the yes. So that means that you've got an equal chance of George reproducing with Angelina as you have of Alfie reproducing with Angelina. There's nothing preventing Angelina doing it with George or with Alfie. Okay. However, if there's a river that goes down the center of that reserve and those two can't cross over, then that's one population and this is one population. Okay, so you have to look at the kind of organism they're talking about. Okay, All right, okay. So Joshua, learn the whole thing. Okay, all right. Um, you learned this in grade eight. Okay, do not obsessively learn this. So, I'm going to tell you what I expect you to know. I expect you to know what a genus is, and I expect you to know what a species is. And then, basically, some idea of a kingdom and a phylum. Not obsess. Don't obsess. So, a species, and how will you know what you have to learn? It's in the sags. In which column, Joshua? The middle column. Aim one. Middle column in the sags. If the middle column in the sags doesn't say you have to know what an order is, you don't learn it. Okay. All right. So a species is a category of classification 
It's a group of individuals with similar characteristics and appearance. And this is critical. Are you listening? Why are you all fiddling? You're counting how many pages. Okay. So remember I told you via an email that population ecology in your textbook is in the grade 11 textbook. Because your textbook is a government school textbook. And it's written according to the CAPS document. Your IB and you use a SAGS, you don't use a CAPS. And for you guys, population ecology is in grade 12. So that's why I've given you IB style notes for this section. So that you keep them for the whole of next year. You won't keep your textbook for next year. Okay, so you're not going to have a textbook to go back to, but it's fine because you've got notes. Okay, all right. So when you learn, learn from the notes. Don't learn from your textbook. Okay. So, are you focused? Are you listening? Group of individuals with similar characteristics and appearance that can breed amongst themselves and produce fertile offspring. Okay, so a game reserve. Game reserve A next to game reserve B with a fence between them. Impala on A, Impala on B. Are they the same population? No, because they can't randomly interbreed because of the fence, and Impala can't get through that fence. Are they the same species? Yes. yes, absolutely. If you put them together, they can breed and they can produce fertile offspring. That is critical to that definition. So, arena. Horses. Horses and donkeys. Okay. Do you all know that? Do you remember that from grade 8? Yes. So a horse can breed with a donkey and produce offspring. Those offspring are called mules. Mules cannot interbreed with each other. Mules are sterile. So for quite complicated reasons to do with their chromosomes that you'll learn about in the section on reproduction, they can't produce gametes. So if you've got a male mule, can't produce fertile sperm. Female mule can't produce fertile egg cells. So while they can do the dirty, they're not going to make offspring. So you've got a horse and a donkey, and they produce a mule. What do you want his name to be? Jeff. Jeff, okay. They produce Jeff. And here's another horse and a donkey produced. What do you want your name to be? Um, Susan. Susan. Susan, okay. <laughs> Jeff and Susan can do sexual intercourse. Because Jeff's got a penis, Susan's got a vagina. They can do sexual intercourse. But they won't produce offspring. Susan can't fall pregnant. Jeff can't produce fertile sperm. Susan can't produce fertile ova. They can't produce offspring. Yo! Okay. All right. Everybody happy with that? So that tells you that a horse and a donkey are different species. Because horses have got individuals with similar characteristics and appearance. And you're quite right, I think. If there's an animal walking up the path, you can look at it and go, oh yeah, that's a horse. Even though you might not have seen that particular horse before, you know what a horse looks like. Okay. Um, Horses can breed with horses, and horses can produce fertile offspring. 
so their offspring will be fertile. Their offspring can, can produce great uh, grandchildren for this lot, etc. Okay, you happy with that? Okay. How will you know that individuals belong to the same species? Because it's written there. So all less, lesser bush babies are the same species. Okay. All right, happy. Community. All of the populations of different species, including all kinds of plants and fungi and bacteria, etc., living together in one area and interacting with each other, is called the community. Okay, all happy with that. A habitat is the area in which an organism lives. So if I say to you, what is the habitat of Galago senegalensis, you will go... You will say what? A bush. A tree or a bush. What area of South Africa? In a sort of forested area or tree bushland area. It's not a grassland. You're never going to find a Gallego swinging around between grass stalks on a mealy field. Okay. All right. So that's a habitat. Okay. So this gives you an example of a community. So this particular one is a rotting log community and it is all the living organisms the plants and the animals living together the fungi the termites the bacteria every single thing that's living there belongs to that community okay ecology you know that anything that ends in ology means study of so ecology is the study of the interactions between all of the living organisms and between the living organisms and their environment. And you learned this definition in grade 10. Let's rephrase that. Judging by your faces, some of you didn't learn it in grade 10, despite the fact that you were meant to learn it in grade 10. Okay. All right, so this just shows you the different levels, individuals, populations, communities, and the ecosystem. All right, you happy? How much longer have we got in this lesson? Um, I was trying to look for the definitions. If, like, it isn't in the glossary, do we have to notice? Yes, that just means I didn't notice. The rule is missing. Yes. How will you know? I will look in the sacks. In which column? Okay. All right. Population size is quite obviously the number of individuals in the population. Or, and this is important, you can also measure population size as being the mass of individuals in a population. What would be an appropriate kind of organism to measure population size as biomass and not as number? Grass. Grass of a particular species or something like bacteria or something like yeast. You're not going to sit and count all the yeast cells in a loaf of bread or in a container that is going to be used for a loaf of bread. Okay. As you know, population size fluctuates seasonally and annually depending on resource availability. Okay. I believe you know this thing. Okay, scientific name. Uh. 
You're a bunch of clueless wonders. Okay. All right. So you know that population size would fluctuate seasonally and annually from year to year, depending on resource availability. Yeah. Who's what? just said that? more impressive and no, 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 no. there's a panther in here <laughs> and then everyone's going to go how do you even know that you so fun <laughs> you can go out, go to the bush lot it's amazing it's really good okay all right okay so you know the population size fluctuates you know what the word fluctuate means i hope It's going to change from um, season to season and from year to year, depending on how many resources there are. What's one of the critical resources that will change from season to season? Water. Would be food or water, okay, or shelter, all right? Okay, so now we're going to look at some def other definitions. Population density, not the same thing as population size. So here, you can see a single cheetah in a really big landscape. So population density is low because in that area, so number of individuals per unit area, in that area, there's only one cheetah. The unit area is not defined, it's, I'm not going to say to you per centimetre squared. It depends on the kind of organism you're looking at. So if I was talking about how many bacteria in terms of population density, I would say per cubic centimetre, because bacteria are very small. But if I'm talking about elephants, the unit area is not going to be Per cubic centimeter because an elephant is a big animal okay whereas here what are these things barnacles barnacles okay and they're growing on a rock you can also get barnacles growing on whales, whales and the bottom of ships the part of the underwater so this is quite a high population density and the unit area, if I was talking about barnacles, I would say probably per square meter because barnacles are quite small. Okay, you're happy. But cheetah would more be per hectare. Okay, all right. Okay. I'm going to leave it at that. It's really critical that any notes that you guys want to write to be able to learn from for exams, you write at this point. I don't want to hear about you still writing notes the day before your prelim exam. No. You have a I do, but you've got to sterilize. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely, and and the PowerPoint. But the PowerPoints, because I did both of them, the PowerPoint and the worksheet will be very good. Yeah. Yes, but mostly I and I use the same.